welcome back to the series of video on thin pressure vessel this time we'll discuss the thin spherical pressure vessel already we have covered the thin cylindrical pressure vessels and we are familiar with the hoop stress that is the circumferential stress axial stress that is the longitudinal stress and the strain and the shear so the same concept we'll use in the case of thin spherical vessel a thin spherical pressure vessel is a container that is used to hold the gases or liquid under pressure. It is made up of a thin spherical shell that is very thin as compared to its radius or diameter. And the thickness of the shell can be considered as negligible when compared to the radius or diameter of the sphere. The vessel is designed to withstand the pressure exerted on it without rupturing or failing. Let here that P represents the gauge pressure. Now the spherical vessel is symmetrical in all directions. So you can make here the horizontal cut or vertical cut. Our section is remains same. Let cut the spherical vessel along the horizontal plane and we will show the cut view. So in this cut view I have developed the two different figure on this area which one is a circumferential area and is a resisting area and on this area the hoop stress will act in a vertically upward direction and on circular area the pressure force will act in a downward direction. So this area here is called as the resisting area. Let's say here we have resisting area equal to A1 is same as equal to circumference which is pi multiplied by di multiplied by thickness t and the total force acting in a vertically upward direction is the hoop stress multiplied by area A1. Whereas the pressure is acting on this grain area and this one will be the projected area. So we have area A2 will be equal to the circular area that will be equal to pi by 4 multiplied by internal diameter square. To develop the equation here for hoop stress we will do the balance along the y direction. So we have summation of Fy vertically upward is positive. Hoop stress multiplied area A1 that is the resisting area that force will act vertically upward. So we have sigma h multiplied by area A1 and the pressure multiplied by area A2 will act in a downward direction will be negative value is pressure P multiplied by area A2 equal to 0. So we can solve this equation and we can find out the value of the hoop stress. So we have hoop stress that is the circumferential stress will be equal to pressure P multiplied by area A2 that will be equal to pi divided by 4 multiplied by di square and is further divided by A1 which is pi into di by t. So it is divided by pi into di divided by t. Now pi term will be get cancel here, one of the di will get cancel and we get the hoop stress is equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by 4 times of t. So we have a hoop stress in thin pericle pressure vessel is equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by 4 times of t. And if you make a cut here in perpendicular to the x direction, then we get a section something like this. So we have a hoop stress is pointing this figure and this figure is almost same. This value of the hoop stress is acting along the y direction and almost same value will exist in the x direction. So sigma x will be same as equal to hoop stress will be equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by 4 times of thickness. So in the state of a stress here two stresses are acting both are the circumferential stresses. So this figure represent the state of a stress. Stress along the x direction is same as equal to the hoop stress and the value of the hoop stress is equal to pressure multiplied by diameter di divided by 4 times of thickness. Similarly the stress acting along the y direction is sigma y is equal to hoop stress is same value is equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by 4 times of t. So both the stresses here are equal to the hoof stresses and in this case the stress acting along the third direction will be equal to 0 and on these two planes here we have shear stress equal to 0. It means that we have principal stress sigma 1 
is same as equal to sigma 2 is equal to the hoop stress sigma h and the third stress will make equal to 0 so we have third principal stress will be equal to 0 so spherical pressure vessel is more straightforward both the stresses acting along the x and y or any direction is same as equal to the hoop stress is pressure multiplied by internal diameter divided by 40 both these two values are identical so we have principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 is equal to sigma h third principal stress will be equal to 0 if you know the principal stresses then we can find out the maximum shear stress in a plane and the absolute maximum shear stress for this one we'll use the Mohr circle on x axis we'll plot the normal stress so this one is representing the positive value of normal stress this one is representing the negative value of a normal stress on y axis we'll show here the shear stress which one is clockwise and on the negative of y axis will show the shear stress in anti-clockwise direction here the principal stress sigma 1 and sigma 2 is identical so we have sigma 1 is same as equal to sigma 2 so we'll get here the Mohr circle will be of zero radius and if sigma 1 and sigma 2 are identical then the maximum shear in plane will be equal to zero so we have tau max that is the maximum shear in plane is given by sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 but sigma 1 is itself equal to sigma 2 so maximum shear in plane will be equal to 0 and then we can plot here the sigma 3 and we will get the second circle and the third circle is identical in diameter so this one is the largest possible Mohr circle you can form either using sigma 1 and sigma 3 or you can form with sigma 2 and sigma 3 the corresponding diameter here will be same as equal to sigma 1 or sigma 2 and the radius will represent here the absolute value of maximum shear so tau max absolute value will be equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 here sigma 1 is same as equal to hoop stress that equal to sigma h sigma 3 equal to 0 divided by 2 and we have hoop stress is equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by 4 times of t and is further divided by 2 absolute value of the shear stress will be equal to pressure p multiplied by di divided by 2 into 4 that will be 8 times of thickness now it is essential here to ensure that the hoof stress does not exceed the yield strength of the material for the vessel to prevent the failure or rupture. So value of hoof stress that is the value of sigma h must be less than equal to S y t or we have hoof stress must be equal to S y t divided by factor of safety. Now we'll develop here the expression for the hoop strain or a circumferential strain. It is defined as a change in the circumference divided by original circumference that will be same as the change in diameter divided by original diameter equal to d. Now the sigma x here is also defining the circumferential strain. Sigma y is also defining the, the circumferential strain here. So we can have epsilon x or epsilon y is same as equal to epsilon h so any one equation we can use here either epsilon x or epsilon y so we have epsilon x is same as equal to epsilon y is same as equal to the hoop strain equal to epsilon h so we have epsilon h will be equal to if i use here epsilon x then it will be equal to sigma x minus mu times sigma y plus sigma z and is divided by ang modulus equal to e this time we have sigma z is equal to 0 and sigma y and sigma x is identical value so we have hoop strain is given as hoop stress divided by ang modulus e into 1 minus poisson ratio mu you can generate the same equation using the epsilon y also 
सो रिमेम्बर द इक्वेशन ऑफ हुप स्ट्रेन इन अ स्पेरिकल वेसल ए सिग्मा एच डिवाइड बाई ई इन टू वन माइनस म्यू वी कैन रिप्लेस इयर सिग्मा एच इक्वल टू प्रेशर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई डायमीटर डिवाइड बाई फोर टाइम्स ऑफ टी इफ यू नो द हुप स्ट्रेन देन वी कैन कैलकुलेट इयर द वॉल्यूमेट्रिक स्ट्रेन वॉल्यूमेट्रिक स्ट्रेन इयर विल डिनोट एज एप्सिलॉन वी इज डिफाइंड एज द चेंज इन वॉल्यूम डिवाइडेड बाई ओरिजिनल वॉल्यूम इक्वल टू वी For spherical vessel, we have volume will be same as equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube is same as equal to pi by 6 into diameter cube. And if we partial differentiate here with respect to d, you will get d v is equal to pi by 6 into 3 times of d square multiplied by partial derivative of d. And if we substitute here, we can solve for volumetric strain. So we have volumetric strain epsilon v will be equal to pi by six and pi by six is cancel here. If I substitute for dv and v, and we'll get here three times of change in diameter to original diameter. So volumetric strain will be same as equal to three times d square into partial derivative of d divided by pi by six is cancel and we left here with d cube. that is volumetric strain will be equal to 3 times change in diameter to original diameter d that is we have 3 times the hoop strain so finally we will get here the expression for volumetric strain so volumetric strain will be equal to 3 times of hoop strain hoop strain is same as sigma h divided by e And is further multiplied by one minus mu. And we can very well replace here the hoop stress that will be equal to pressure multiplied by di divided by four times of t. So these are the useful equations we can use. For so to calculate the volumetric strain or the hoop strain, we require the knowledge of pressure, diameter, thickness t, and the angle modulus e. So theory is straightforward. One formula you have to remember for hoop stress. Stress acting along the x direction and y direction is same. Therefore, we have epsilon x and epsilon y is identical, is same as epsilon h. Stress along the third direction will be equal to zero. We can use the generalized Hooke's law, and we can develop the expression for circumferential strain, which is change in diameter divided by original diameter equal to sigma h divided by e into one minus mu. And three times of diametral strain or a circumferential strain will be our volumetric strain so volumetric strain is 3 times of the hoop strain so the formula for volumetric strain is 3 times sigma h divided by ang modulus e into 1 minus mu using the volumetric strain we can find out here the change in volume with respect to original volume v take with simple numerical to find out the value of thickness in the case of spherical vessel A spherical gas storage tank with an inside diameter of 9 meter is being constructed to store a gas under the internal pressure of 1.6 megapascal. The tank will be constructed from the steel that has a yield strength of 340 megapascal. Factor of safety is equal to 3. Using the factor of safety we can calculate here the allowable stress and that value of allowable stress will give to hoop stress that is the only stress present in the case of spherical thin pressure vessels determine the minimum wall thickness required for the spherical tank the internal diameter di is 9 meter is 9000 mm is subjected to internal pressure p that equal to 1.6 megapascal we assume it is a gauge pressure yield strength is given is equal to 340 megapascal factor of safety will represent equal to n is equal to 3 using this we can calculate here the allowable stress so we have sigma allowable will be equal to the yield strength in the tension divided by a factor of safety that is equal to n we have syt is equal to 340 and we have factor of safety is equal to 3 so we have allowable stress will be equal to 113 Point three three, that will be megapascal. If we allocate the value of sigma allowable equal to 
the hoop stress that will give the minimum value of thickness. So we have hoop stress is same as equal to sigma allowable. And the hoop stress in the case of spherical vessel is given as pressure P multiplied by diameter DI divided by 4 times of the wall thickness. This value will give you minimum value because we have equated it to sigma allowable. Right hand side we have sigma allowable. We have pressure is given as 1.6 diameter equal to 9000 and is divided by 4 times the minimum thickness of the shell will be equal to the sigma allowable which is 113.33 megapascal. So this time directly we will get the thickness in mm. So we have minimum thickness will be equal to 31.8 mm. For any thickness greater than 31.8, the stress will be less than the allowable stress and our factor of safety will increase. A thin spherical shell 1 meter in diameter and the wall thickness is 1.2 cm is filled with a fluid at atmospheric pressure that is equal to P atmospheric. And if 175 cm cube of more fluid is pumped into it. So additionally we have 175 cm cube of the fluid is injected into the thin cylinder. The circumferential stress developed we have to find out. This figure represents here a thin spherical shell with an internal diameter di equal to 1 meter. So we have di is equal to 1000 mm. Wall thickness is 1.2 cm. So we have thickness equal to 1.2 multiplied by 10 that equal to 12 mm. We have given here the change in volume that is delta v. We have original volume equal to v is same as equal to the volumetric strain and we have volumetric strain equal to 3 times the hoop strain. 3 times here we have hoop strain equal to the hoop stress divided by Eng modulus E into 1 minus mu. We have given the value of mu, we have given the value of Eng modulus. So only thing that we have to calculate here the value of V first. Once we know V, we can calculate epsilon V, then we can calculate sigma H. So if we calculate V, then we are able to calculate Epsilon V and therefore we can calculate Sigma H. So we have original volume V. In the case of here, it will be 4 by 3 pi R cube or simply equal to pi by 6 multiplied by D I cube. Now this answer is given in CM cube. So we'll calculate this value in CM cube. So we have volumetric strain will be equal to change in volume divided by original volume we have change in volume is given as 175 cm cube. So we have 175 cm cube divided by pi by 6. So we have pi 6 will shift in numerator and di will take in cm. 1 meter is a diameter that will be equal to 100 and we have cube of it. Solve this you will get volumetric strain. So we have volumetric strain epsilon v will be equal to the dimensionless is 3.34 into 10 to the power minus 3. And the volumetric strain epsilon v is equal to 3 times the hoop strain. The volumetric strain epsilon v is equal to 3 times and we know the hoop strain is given as hoop stress divided by Eng modulus e into 1 minus Poisson ratio mu. Epsilon V is equal to 3.34 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 3. We are interested in the hoop stress. Eng modulus will take in megapascal is 200 into 10 to the power 3. So our answer of hoop stress will also come in megapascal multiplied by 1 minus mu is equal to 0.3 this and you will find the value of hoop stress. So you will get the value of hoop stress is close to 31.7 that will be megapascal. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects 
involved in mechanical engineering for GATE. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.